this video is day 20. So, first question, right off the bat, 4 to the 4th power. 4 to the 4th power is not 4 times 4. Eh, now I know what it was not working. It's uh, 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. Sorry, should I have used a dot? And 4 times 4 I know is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. And then the last one, 64 times 4 is, uh, I don't know, 16, 24, 256. Okay. Evaluate their expression when m equals 14. This is easy enough. You substitute. So under that, let's replace the 14, or I'm sorry, the m with 14. And it becomes a very simple problem. And that just gives us 5. Let's move this little thing down a little bit more. And let's clear the screen first. And I'm not going to go down. Okay. So use the distributive property to write an expression equivalent, so we can use the distributive property, remember? Okay. Right now you should be tired of doing these, because um, then you should be an expert. 6 times x is 6x, 6, 6 times 2 is 12, and then it's a plus and a sign. I'm going to say Rosa just to go down a little bit. Write an equation to describe, uh, write an equation to describe the pattern. So what's happening here? Um, do you see a relationship here? Going on over and over and over again. That one's an easy. Times three. Times three. Times three. So the relationships are times three. So how do you write the equation? So you can write that the equation here. Okay. Um, remember, this is your independent, and this is your dependent, right? So your y depends on x. So if you write the sentence, the y depends on x. Y depends on x because y is your dependent on x so you're going to write, you can change that in your right and what's the relationship? times 3 okay uh, lower this a little bit you know why my computer always heats up when I do this okay, um, Bryn took ten dollars with her to the store she bought a loaf of cereal for 280 a gallon of milk for 376 how much change will she get easy problem yet a lot of people get this wrong you forget decimals you forget your where to how to line them up etc so she bought two items 280 and 376 let's find out um, what her total cost so you would add that and I'm going to do it here okay 280 okay 3.76 Decimal and the decimal are place values. We're adding place values. Same place value, same place value. The hundreds here is the hundreds, the tenths with the tens, and the ones with the ones. And we have a total of 656. Okay, she got $10. That number does not have a decimal. Add a decimal. So we can put that decimal right here. And that becomes a 656. I need these two zero zeros, place overs, and uh, let's start subtracting. You need to borrow all the way from that corner. That one becomes a zero. This guy's going to become a 10, but he's going to borrow some 9, 10 again, 9, and that one goes over here, and we got 4, 4, 3. That's your change. Okay. Um, oops. I'm actually clicking answer here for you, so it stays there for a little bit. Okay. Mm, now it's division. Okay, division. So a lot of people, I noticed when I when we did the test prep, kids in the other class did it uh, differently. So um, I like my way. Okay, but you are free to do whatever you're comfortable with. So in our classes, we did where we changed this when improper first. So three times and the plus three times two is six plus one seven over two divided by one fifth. Okay, now we can't divide these. Okay, so we're gonna find a common denominator. We're gonna switch. So the two becomes a ten, and the five is gonna be ten because that's the common denominator. How did the two become a ten? It was a times five. On top, we're gonna have times five. And that's gonna give me thirty-five. The bottom is going to be a times two. Now it's times two. So that's going to be two. All right. 
Now that my denominator, the denominators are the same, I can just cross the bottoms out because they're all the same uh, size pieces here. So it's going to be 35 over 2, and I write that as a fraction, 35 over 2. And that's going to give us uh, 17 point, 17 and a half, or 17.5. That should have been fine. Okay. Um, that's that one. Next one, point, plus to point, negative 5 and 0. On a coordinate plane, okay, I like it when it's plain, when the, there's no numbers. You don't have to go, this is 1, this is 2, and write those down, numbers down, especially on the negative side. It gets confusing, gets messy, and it gets crowded. Know your scales, okay? What point negative five and zero? Negative five. If each of these is one, then we would go one negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. And zero means we don't go up or down, and that's our point. Okay, four. If you start on three and on the number line you move five units to the left, where would you end up? So three would be right here. And you go left five times. Uno, dos, three, cuatro, cinco you end up at negative 2. Okay? Let's clear that. And let's take this a little bit. Okay, here. Fates and proportions. Okay. La Complete the ratio table. Okay, what? Let's see. 8 and 3. Oops, wow. 8 and 16. Alright, so. There's two ways of doing this. You can look sideways, side to side, H3. Mm, that's not helping us. 32 to 12 or 12 to 32. Nothing I know of. Multiply divides nicely. So, but if you don't, you can go this way. How did the 8 become 16? Times 2. So, what am I going to do? To the other side is times 2, which is 6. Okay. How did, let's do the 9. How did the 3 become a 9? It's a times 3 relationship, which is a 9, and then here will also be times 3, which gives us 24. If we want to check, we can use the last one. How did the 8 become a 32 times 4, and how did the 3 become a 12 times 4? So, you can use that. Okay, think of it as fractions. Look, 8 over 32 equals 3 over 12. Okay, does it? Mm, no, I just said. Take that out. Um, on number two, what am I doing here? Nelly bought a computer for four hundred dollars. Okay, it was on sale for twenty dollars off. What was the original price of the computer? You take diagram to help. Hmm. Okay, so. No, second. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so where are we? Um, take diagram. <clears throat> it's a different type of take diagram here. It's, think of it as a number line. I'd rather you think of it as a number line. So here at the bottom, I'm going to use percentages, 0%. It's going to be our dollars. Zero dollars, zero percent. So, uh, it was on sale for twenty percent off. So twenty percent off means minus twenty percent, which means you paid eighty percent of the product, right? So let's try to do this in increments of twenty. Zero, twenty percent, forty percent. Oh, the percent's not coming out nicely. Sixty percent. 80% and 100%. Okay, so this was a full price. She didn't pay full price, she paid 80% of the total, and that is 400. Okay, so <clears throat> how many we have? One, two, three, four. One, four parts that equals 400. So, what could be here to reach 400? And that's what you got to think of. All right, so if I had 400 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, it would be 100. So let's see if that works. 100, 200, 300. And what do you think the full price was? 500. 
you want to check that problem, we can do it this way. Okay. What's 20% of 500? Well, 20% of 500. The relationship is times 5. Times 5. And that would give you 100. So, if you bought something that was had a value of $500, but you had a 20% discount, the 20% discount would be how much? 100. And that would bring you to this, and this is how much you would have paid. Okay. I think I made a little mess out of that. All right, 15 of the kids in class still haven't finished a part. What percent of the students have finished? What percent? Of well, if 15% have not finished, that means that 85 have. That's a really simple question. Okay, so 100% of the kids minus 15% of the kids that did not finish. Percent, percent, and that leaves us with 85% of the kids class that has finished. Four, if there are 40 kids in your science class, how many students have finished? Oh, okay, now we're talking. So I see. There are 40 kids in your science class, how many students have finished a product class? So, there we go. 100% and we want to know 85% finished their projects. Okay, and what is that out of 40? So, 40% the total number of kids. Let's see. Uh, is there a relationship here? No, there isn't. So we got to change this ratio here. So 85 out of 100. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. No, is that going to help us? No. Yes, it is. If I divide this by 5, divide this by 5, 100 divided by 5 is going to give us 20. And 85 divided by 5 is going to give us uh, uh, 17. So I'm not going to use this anymore. Because I divided this by 5, and I divided this by 5. Okay, and I can use 17 over 20. Is there a relationship? Yes, there is, times 2. And this is a relationship times 2. So if I had 40 kids in the class, wow, big class, 34 of them would have finished their assignment. Okay? Uh, it's clear, 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 clear. All right, so last section, I hope. Okay, your backyard is shaped like something, like a rectangle. Okay, those of you lucky to have a rectangle, it measures 45 and a half times 50. Okay, so 45 and a half, okay, this is not the scale, obviously, 45 and a half. And this measures 50, it's a rectangle, so this is 45 and a half. And this is 50. Okay, so. How much, and you want to put fence around, so we're not finding the area, we're finding the perimeter, so how much fencing do I need to go around? So you would have to add all those four numbers, 50 plus 50, plus 45 plus 45, which is 190, total 191. And we need 191 feet of fencing to go around, not the area, fencing. The fence you want to cost $3 per foot, how much will the fence will it cost, how much, the fen how much will the fence, well, I need 191 feet of fencing, which is a long fence, and I divide that by three, because that's per foot, oh, I'm sorry, it's 191 per foot, so I have 90, 191 of feet that I need, times three, it's going to give me three, seven, five hundred seventy-three dollars to go around that backyard, yikes, pretty expensive, you, need, you decide to plant new grass in your backyard, determine the area of your backyard now, okay, the area would be 45 and a half times 50. Do I really need to do that? So you can multiply 45.5. I would change it, okay? So that's what make life easier, times 50. Okay, that zero goes here, 525 goes two, goes two, 27 goes two, 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 one decimal place. So my answer should have one decimal place, 2,275. What am I doing this in feet? Feet squared. Okay, so grass is going to cost me a dollar fifty. Wow, it's going to cost me a lot of money. So if I have two thousand two hundred seventy-five feet square of area available, and I need to put grass inside of this, I divide it by one fifty. No, I multiply. I'm sorry. Why am, I, why am I dividing? Same thing at the top. Two thousand two hundred twenty-five square feet. 
Now multiply it by 150. Okay. So, put the zero here, 5 times 5, 25, goes to 35, 37, 3, 10, 13, goes 1, 11, and then move one over, 2, 2, 7, 5, final answer is going to cost me 0, 10, 15, 7, 3, 1, move two decimal places, it's going to cost me 1,375, Dollars? Really? Am I doing something wrong? No, I guess not. $3,000? Really? Well, I guess that's the cost. So, final answer was, and I'm sorry I made it so ugly at the bottom. Um, it's at zero, 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 five. Zero, zero, five, six, three, one. Zero, zero, five, six, three, one. No, not in fifty one. Can't see sideways. All right, so sorry. It's Dragging this. So um, try again. Zero zero five six six three one. Yep. Well, a thousand three hundred sixty-five dollars. Okay. Let's find that weird. Very expensive. All right, that's it.